to try to go through the slides really quickly to leave enough time for uh, Celeste and also, of course, and then a lot of questions from you guys too. So um, I'm going to be moving very quickly. The reason I got involved with um, uh, backyard chickens is that I was very concerned about the source of uh, the eggs at that time, many years ago, that I could get either the grocery store, food club, it was very hard to get um, organic and free run in one egg. You could find one or the other, but together, even just like seven years ago, it was next to impossible. So that's why I started, uh, decided that I wanted to know how the, what the life was like for the hens whose eggs I was eating. That was, prime of, that was my motivator, and then I discovered how fantastic those eggs taste. That's what hooked me. That was the back, so this was uh, the house I lived in when I first got the hens. There are three hens in that backyard. Hard to see. Uh, the coop was in the back left-hand corner of that garden. It was an egg loo, which is a fabulous urban coop. <laughs> Uh, those were my first um, three hens, Hermione, Nog, and Rue. Um, my neighbors, this is my neighbor Kevin, <laughs> as he discovered that I had backyard hens. I always have my camera with me. I can go right into the picture of you guys, that's what I normally do. Um, uh, this is my, my neighbor in my new place, Gabriel, who brings slugs from his garden to feed the hens. Neighbors are crucial, critical. Uh, I should have said right at the beginning, backyard hens are illegal in Toronto. So, uh, but it's the bylaw is complaints driven. So if your neighbors are happy and nobody else can see the hens, hence that incredible camouflage you saw in the garden where it was hard to actually see the hens, um, you'll be able to you know, anyway, I have, uh, I'll talk about some problems I have, but um, basically if your neighbors are happy, there's a good chance you can keep them. Um, people have a lot of fears and worries about backyard hens and other livestock. I showed you a picture of Kevin, my neighbor. The neighbors to the north of me, literally 10 feet away from the hens, did not realize I had hens. And after a month, I thought, well, they're just not saying anything because they're really angry and they're going to report me. So I have to go up and say, hey, let's talk about this. What do you think? I knocked on the door. I had three eggs in my hand. Knocked on the door and said, what do you think of the hands? No, I said, what do you think about my backyard surprise? And they said, what are you talking about? And I said, here are the eggs from the three live creatures that are living 10 feet away from you and have been for a month. And they said, I had no idea. So it, the, the myths around the impact that these creatures will have on the, ne the negative impacts, um, uh, if you're looking after your hen, if you're looking after your coop properly, there's not gonna be, no, hens are not noisy, it's roosters that are noisy, you don't need roosters for eggs. Hens on their own will produce eggs. Um, there's a lot of controversy though <laughs> around uh, backyard hens and these controversies explode quite regularly. This was a um, the Toronto Sun. What's the date there? 2010, April. People are passionate about hens, which I uh, I think Celeste will be talking about a little bit. People have big positive or negative responses to the idea of having backyard hens. Uh, um, I myself. Um, had a bit of a scare when I looked out the window and saw this animal services truck. Really weirdly, they were busting a neighbor who I did not realize had backyard hens. Oh. Which raises another issue. Someone reported the hens two doors away from me and did not report me. Obvious, all my neighbors know I am so vocal in public about having hens. Right. But what have, I've really noticed is that bylaws are often used, used to fight other battles. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, uh, I've encountered with the native plant gardening work that I do, the naturalization work that I do, those bylaws any, are used to fight other battles. Um, I did at my last house 
have the bylaw officers. Can you see them? There's one there. Um, you can see her. Um, I did have bylaw officers show up, not because a neighbor had complained, but because I had just published this book, City Farmer, where you know it's all about that backyard hands. I've been doing tons of media and talk example of me, you know, and to, and then my counselor told me, look, just tone it down. Um, um, we can talk about that. So I got a notice. Um, I was photographing them. They were not happy. Um, I the notice was for keeping. It was a warning, and I was going to be charged three hundred dollars if I didn't get rid of the hands. Instead, I moved the next day which was part of the plan anyway. The, the moving truck was in the, in the driveway when the building, when the, the bylaw officers showed up. They didn't pursue me, they didn't go to find me. So people are worried that hens are noisy. Um, hens are not noisy, they clock for maybe a couple of minutes after they lay an egg. They're pretty quiet, quiet creatures. People are worried about um, uh, roosters. Um, so one of the, my missions is to really, and one of the reasons why I'm so public about having hens eat in Toronto, even though it's illegal, is that I think that the more people have first-hand experience with backyard coops, the, the fewer myths will circulate about backyard hens. So this idea that they're noisy, Come on and visit the hens. I say to anybody who has any interest whatsoever, come listen to the backyard. See if you hear them. Come smell the backyard. See if you smell them. Come, you know, like look, look at this setup um, to have some first-hand experience of how low impact hens are. So I invited two Toronto councillors to visit. Um, on the right is my councillor, Anna Balau, and on the left is Mary Margaret McMahon. Um, who were interested uh, in the context of coming up with a food strategy in Toronto, these councillors were very proactive and interested in, hey, how can urban livestock fit into that, and what are the concerns, and so they came to, as a, a, an edu a fact finding mission. So, um, one of the things I've also been involved with, again, is part of this educational, or sort of um, and what do we sort of outreach to answer people's questions about urban livestock like hens is for James Walk? Have, have there been London James Walks as well? Yes. Yeah, okay, and it, um, it, in honor of Jane, Jane Jacobs' community led walks. So I did one on bicycle to see the back, it was a uh, tour de coops oh. to see um, backyard coops in Toronto. And this one, though, was a front yard coop, which was amazing. So um, that even though it's illegal, you know, she was very not hiding <laughs> those creatures, but friendly neighbors and doing it in a way that didn't have an impact on the neighbors. Um, another really important thing in terms of kind of addressing um, there's the kind of educational work of addressing myths and concerns and, and kind of inviting people to have first-hand experience. But then there's also the political work of, you know, like inviting counselors over to see the coops. Uh, this is my friend Karen May. She and I were actually at Queen's Park with some hens as part of a food event. There was a, a food event at Queen's Park, so uh, we went with hens. Just to, sort of on the seat of the legislature really. Um, well, another thing that people are worried about are pests. So there's this idea that backyard hens will attract pests. As you can see from this uh, rat tunnel, it is true that if you're not doing proper food maintenance, so feed, the feed for your hens, if you're not taking it in at night, if you uh, are, are leaving a lot of grain on the ground, and your city hat or your neighborhood has a pest problem like rats, then rats are very opportunistic and they'll come eat that feed. It's a pretty easy um, uh, fix though. You just have to do proper feed maintenance, not leaving grains lying around on the ground. Any rat problem whatsoever, despite living in, in the downtown um, and there being definitely rats in the area. I didn't have a rat problem in my coop um, and I, I haven't. I had a rat problem for the first time, the first time I had a bird feeder. Mm -hmm. And 
I was thrilled to have a bird feeder, and um, the seed was coming out. And um, then I started seeing rats underneath the porch going out to get this seed. So, it, um, so that alerted me to the need to do proper management of my bird feeder. But interestingly, the, the chicken uh, coop has not had a problem because I'm pretty careful about the, um, about the feed. Um, one of the issues with um, the, an urban chicken coop that's really important is making sure, I, for me, uh, you know, I mentioned at the beginning that the reason I started keeping hens was over concern about animal welfare and the life of the vast majority of the hens, the breeding hens that are out there, in the conditions they're in, they're living in is appall is appalling in the in the um, battery hen commercial context. So animal secure animal welfare was really important to me, um, and the hens' security in the backyard is thus very important to me. Um, it was one of the reason or one of the issues in management. Uh, so, hens can fly a little bit, um, and I, this is a stage where I just had to keep makeshift making the fence higher in a very slapdash manner as I would go outside and I started out with a three foot fence and then I started in adding bamboo poles and more fence to five feet and then I had a really, really look at her. <laughs> Look at her room. She was a she was a flyer, so she'd get up on top of the coop and she could sail over that. So that's a very dangerous situation for the hen. Well, actually, um, the main thing was I had to run around the neighborhood <laughs> after her with a fishing net. That was very humiliating. <laughs> she had a riot. She didn't mind. Um, but one so making sure that the perimeter of the property can can protect the hens is super important. And if you're in an area that has any daytime predators, like fox, uh, foxes, urban foxes, then that's something to take into account because then you would have to cover the entire coop. Whereas um, my, the run my chickens are in, when I let them out of the egg loo, uh, they there's no roof because there are no daytime predators. There are, where I am, there aren't foxes. All the predators are nighttime predators, and the hens, I put them in that coop that I showed you at night. But um, as far as the flying, the flight risk, the clipping the flight feathers, which is, is like, it's like clipping fingernails. It's not painful to the hens at all, and it uh, lessens the risk. Predators in the city, though, the one I did not prepare for, and as it turns out, was not no problem, but one day I looked outside and there was a cooper's hawk mm -hmm. on the table and the chickens were nowhere to be seen. <laughs> I freaked out. Um, first I took a picture and then <laughs> and the hens were like hiding behind the tree pretending not to be there. Um, but most of the predators um, are things like raccoons that are on the eye of the night. Uh, pets, uh, this is a, when I was kind of hen sitting a friend's coop in the backyard as well. So along with my hens, I had a friend's hens and her her um, coop. Uh, my, that's my cat, Joey, and he really, <laughs> he loves the chickens. And they, and they terrify, they, they terrify him. He loves them, then he goes in and then he gets terrified. <laughs> no, there's no, some dogs are, some dogs and hens do not mix whatsoever, but it depends on the breed. It's very breed specific. I've seen photographs of hens sitting on top of dogs, so it very much depends on the breed. But cats, no problem. So a very big issue with hens in this, uh, in an urban context, and I think if anyone is work is thinking of working here in London to get a buy, uh, to incorporate urban livestock into the a strategy or if lobbying or working with your councillors, your representatives to talk about urban agriculture, um, urban livestock in the context of food security or you know whatever it is that is motivating that interest. It's really important to think uh, about uh, the hen health issue and veterinary access. Now. It, um, it might not be as much of an issue with a strong 
uh, rural farming community, peri-urban, ex-urban situation here. In Toronto, it's very hard to get professional hen care, which means you have to depend on farmer, make a farmer friend very quickly. Um, so the person I got, the farmer I got the hens from has been an amazing support. Farmers who come to the farmer's market, I have been known to go down and say, ah, my hen is doing this. What, what's the deal here? What do you advise? A lot of small scale work can be done. This is uh, my friend Karen's hen who had um, bumblefoot. Talk to, talk to fellow farmers, what do you do? And they all said, we lance it, we clean it, we wrap it, and the hen was okay. But it's a real issue. Hen care, what's your plan? What's your plan? Uh, if a raccoon attacks your, somehow gets into your coop in the middle of the night and you have a partially, you know, uh, chewed. chewed hen, do you know how to put it out of its misery? What's your plan? It's really important, I think, and those are hard questions. Another issue that often comes up just in people's minds about keeping back their hens in the city is what about winter? Um, I do not have hens at the moment because I've moved out briefly for a reno, um, but uh, I've had hens for many, many years. During the very, very cold winters as well, so the coldest one in recent memory was it 2013, 2014, it was down negative 20 pretty well for weeks. So I had that from that year. I just covered the coop with bubble wrap and the hens are, they're, they're made, big generators of heat themselves. They're little furnaces. I had a backup bulb, a reptile bulb, and a, and a line run out there that I could plug in if necessary, but the hens were always fine, they, so didn't do it. I just want to turn attention quickly to other possibilities of urban livestock and from some other places I've visited. So what, <coughs> what is, actually I wanted to ask you this question, what is the first thing that comes, how would you describe Paris, uh, Paris, England, uh, Paris, France? as a city. What's the word that would come to mind for you? Romantic. Romantic. Yeah. Elegant. Like all that sort of stuff. Very dense. Dense. Very urban. Beautiful. Kind of... Uh, there are goats all over Paris. <laughs> they, um, not for food. I didn't need any for food. I met them for lawn maintenance. <laughs> they are incorporated into, the, this is in the Jardin de I don't know how to say it, Tuileries? So, like right by the Louvre, basically. You can go visit the goats. Um, so, other cities incorporate livestock. Every major U.S. city you can think of allows, or not every, almost every U.S. city allows uh, backyard hands. A couple of Toronto, uh, a couple of Canadian ones like Vancouver, Niagara Falls, Guelph, there are others, allow them. It's a real, and historically, all, so every, people kept hens historically. It was a very common practice in cities. It's only been more recently. Like, to, the not having hens in cities is the anomaly, in fact. Uh, and so, uh, this is also in Paris, hens everywhere. This is at a restaurant. This is the backyard of a restaurant called La Recyclerie which has some fabulous urban agriculture stuff happening. These are the sheep cutting the lawn in the Parc Villette in Paris. These are the bees uh, on, the, on a rooftop mm -hmm. in an apartment building. These are the bees in a public park, the Jardin de Luxembourg. These are the hens on the top of a very fancy hotel in Paris, the Hotel Pullman. Um, the um, rooms go for 750 euros a night, and they have hens on their roof. It's just like, it is a con, and when I toured it, and I talked with the, um, uh, the person in charge of them, and I explained, well, you know, in most Canadian cities, we're not allowed to have backyard hens. And the look on her face, <laughs> But why? You know, it's just like, she was, why? why you know that? You know, like she was just like, what do you do for your omelets? You know, like, how, how do you eat? 
you know, I was like, the idea was that like it offended her French food, you know, radar that we would not have fresh eggs in the city. Uh, this is a community garden in uh, Paris where you you know espalier fruit trees and hens. This is Monet's garden in Giverny. Hens. These are more attractive hens at Monet's garden in Giverny. Yet another more attractive bird at, in Giverny. This is in London at the Kensington Garden. So basically the Royal Park, right downtown London, England. Royal Park. They have hens. The allotment gardens. They take their hen um, health seriously. Anyway, I just so I will end there and and um, uh, say that there are obviously there are ways to incorporate uh, livestock into cities. It has to be done thoughtfully. Uh, the bylaw context is very important. There, are, there's lots of account, human, you know, nuisance factors into account to be able to have a a, content, a policy framework for having animals in the city. And some places have done it with pilot projects. That's a really great way to sort of sneak it in. And also do that public education work. Have a pilot project where people can see what it's like and allay those fears. I'll stop there.